Understanding Physics, AP6, Assessed Practical number six, and this is about EMF and internal resistance. So this is the equipment that you should use. This is what I use. This is how I do it, which is obviously the best way. So some kind of um, cell, like a physics department, battery holder, thingamajig, 1.5 voltish cell thing. Um, a rheostat, uh, so a variable resistor, about 10 ohms, uh, 8.5 ohm rheostat, that one is. Uh, and to change the resistance, you basically move the slider. So if you use if you use that connection there and that connection there, then the resistance bit is this bit here, isn't it? Yes. So as you slide it along, that gets bigger or smaller and changes the resistance. A uh, couple of multimeters, uh, so DC volts, going to be about two, three, four volts. Uh, and a DC ammeter, um, and that's about it, and then some leads. And basically, you build that circuit there, uh, and what we do is we change the external resistance by fiddling with the rheostat, and we measure the terminal PD and the current. The terminal PD will be what the voltmeter reads, it's actually the voltage across the external circuit, but the, the ammeter, we pretend that doesn't exist. So we're measuring the terminal PD and we're measuring the current. We don't have to measure the resistance, okay? We're changing the resistance. We're measuring V and I. Um, have a switch in the circuit and just have it closed for a couple of seconds long enough to take a reading. If you don't do that, well, we might be drawing kind of, you know, about an amp from this little cell and uh, it can't handle that for very long. It's, it's internal resistance and its EMF may change. OK, so just have it closed for a couple of seconds as long as you need to take a reading, open it, change the resistance, do it again, etc., etc., till you've got about seven or eight uh, pairs of values. Then you plot a graph and you plot a graph of the terminal PD against the current uh, and you should get a straight line. Uh, and then what do we do with this? Well, if you look at this, if I rearrange the equation, E equals V plus IR. So V equals minus IR plus E. So Y equals MX plus C. Therefore, the intercept on the y-axis will be the EMF uh, and the gradient will be minus little r. So you get the gradient of your graph and that gradient will be minus r. Yeah, where little r is the internal resistance. Pretty straightforward. What you could do is you might be asked to do one cell on its own uh, and then two cells in series and then maybe two cells in parallel. You might be asked to do that. Not necessary, though. Just one cell on its own will do and should get you a decent graph. Uh, the EMF obviously is going to be about 1.5 volts um, and the internal resistance will be about an ohm, um, maybe a little bit less. It's usually a bit around an ohm for these cells. Uncertainties in our measurements uh, not a great deal. Uh, if we're using digital voltmeters and ammeters like a multimeter, then, you know, maybe one or two percent at the most measuring V and I. Not a lot. Not worth error bars anyway. Uh, and these are the things just basically evidence that you've built the circuit. You've used the multimeters, you've taken measurements, you've built the circuits. Um, and that's it really. You've plotted the graph, you've got a value for the EMF uh, and the internal resistance. That's about it. Pretty straightforward this one.